in the dimly lit streets of Victorian London, where gas lamps cast ghostly illuminations and the fog often concealed more than it revealed, there emerged a legend that would grip the city in a mix of fear, fascination, and disbelief. This was not the tale of Jack the Ripper, the notorious serial killer who would later haunt Whitechapel, but of another Jack, one who leapt over rooftops, spewed blue flames, and terrorized the populace with his devilish antics. He was known as Springheeled Jack. In October 1837, Mary Stevens was on her way to Lavender Hill after visiting her parents in Battersea. Employed as a servant, she was familiar with the route and the walk through Clapham Common. However, that evening was different. As she passed a dark alley, an unexpected figure suddenly jumped out at her. Caught off guard, Mary was quickly restrained by the stranger who held her tightly. He forcibly kissed her and began tearing at her clothes. Disturbingly, she noticed his hands felt unusually cold, later describing them in her statement as, as cold and clammy as those of a corpse. Reacting instinctively, Mary screamed loudly, drawing the attention of nearby residents. The attacker, sensing the approaching help, quickly fled the scene. The locals, hearing her distress, came to her aid and immediately began searching for the man, but he had disappeared into the night. From that moment on, tales of Spring-Heeled Jack began to spread like wildfire. He was described as having a tall, thin frame, clad in a tight-fitting white oilskin suit. His eyes, they said, were like red balls of fire, and his fingers ended in sharp metallic claws. But what truly set him apart was his alleged ability to leap incredible distances, easily clearing walls and rooftops. Just a day after Mary Stevens' harrowing encounter with the mysterious figure, the residents near her home were once again thrown into a state of alarm. The very same enigmatic man whose description matched Mary's assailant made a chilling reappearance. On this occasion, his antics took a dangerous turn. As a carriage made its way down the road, the leaping figure suddenly sprang into its path. The unexpected obstruction caused the coachman to lose control, sending the carriage careening off the road. The crash was severe, leaving the driver with significant injuries. But the figure's malevolence didn't end there. Witnesses at the scene recounted how, after causing the accident, he made a swift and almost supernatural escape. With agility that defied belief, he vaulted over a nine foot or 2.7 meter tall wall. As he disappeared from sight, the chilling sound of his high-pitched, ringing laughter echoed in the air, leaving a lasting impression of dread on those who heard it. This incident, coming so soon after Mary's traumatic experience, intensified the growing fear and intrigue surrounding the mysterious Leaper, further solidifying his place in local legend. By January 9, 1838, the matter had become so widely discussed that it had reached the chambers of the Mansion House, the official residence of the Lord Mayor of London. Sir John Cohen, the Lord Mayor at the time during a public session, unveiled an anonymous complaint he had received days prior regarding the mysterious entity. The complaint detailed the terror and disturbances caused by this elusive figure. To further emphasize the gravity of the situation, a member from the audience chimed in, noting that servant girls, especially in areas like Kensington, Hammersmith, and Ealing, had recounted harrowing tales of encounters with this supposed ghost or devil. National papers, including the Times, picked up the story by January 10th. The following day, Sir John Cohen showcased a plethora of letters he had received from various parts of London, all narrating similar unsettling encounters with the figure. The letters painted a picture of widespread panic in suburban London. Disturbingly, some letters detailed physical harm, mentioning that the entity had claws which it used to wound its victims. Others spoke of individuals who had been so terrified that they suffered fits, and some even claimed that there had been deaths due to sheer fright. Despite the mounting evidence, the Lord Mayor exhibited a degree of skepticism. He believed that the tales had been greatly exaggerated and found it implausible that a mere ghost could perform such devilish acts. 
However, he couldn't dismiss the accounts entirely, especially after a trusted source informed him of a servant girl in Forest Hill who had been terrified into fits by a figure resembling a bear. In light of these reports, the police were directed to intensify their search for the individual or individuals responsible for these disturbances. Rewards were even announced for any information leading to their capture. Interestingly, a report from the Brighton Gazette, later featured in the Times, detailed an encounter in Rose Hill, Sussex. A gardener claimed to have been chased by a creature that resembled a bear. This creature, after growling to get the gardener's attention, scaled a garden wall, ran along it, and then pursued the gardener. After the chase, the creature made an exit by scaling the wall again. The Times, drawing parallels with the ongoing hysteria, speculated that Spring-Heeled Jack might have made his way to Sussex, even though the description varied from the typical accounts. In the cold month of February 1838, a chilling episode unfolded at the residence of Jane Alsop that would further cement the legend of Spring-Heeled Jack in the annals of London's mysteries. On the night of the 19th of February, the quiet of the Alsop household was disrupted by the urgent ringing of their doorbell. Answering the door, Jane was met by a man under the guise of a police officer, urgently claimed that they had captured the elusive spring-heeled Jack nearby and needed a light. Trusting the plea, Jane fetched a candle for the supposed officer. However, as she handed it over, the man's true nature was horrifyingly revealed. Casting aside a large cloak, the man presented a nightmarish visage. His face erupted in blue and white flames, and his eyes glowed like fiery red orbs. The terror didn't end with his appearance. His attire, which clung to him, was reminiscent of white oilskin, and atop his head sat a large helmet. But what truly struck fear into Jane's heart were his claws, seemingly made of metal, which he used to grasp her, tearing at her gown. Panicking, Jane screamed and tried to flee back to the safety of her home, but the assailant was relentless. He pursued her, catching her on the steps of her own house, and continued his assault, slashing at her neck and arms with his wicked claws. It was only the timely intervention of one of Jane's sisters that saved her, causing the monstrous figure to retreat and vanish into the night. This harrowing encounter with Spring-Heeled Jack not only traumatized Jane Alsop, but also added another layer of fear and intrigue to the growing legend of this mysterious and menacing figure. The police were baffled. Despite numerous reports and sightings, they could find no evidence of this mysterious assailant. Some believed he was a supernatural entity, a demon or a ghost come to terrorize the living. Others thought that he might be an extraordinarily agile human, using the cover of darkness and the city's dense fog to elude capture. Over the years, many theories have been proposed about the true identity and nature of Spring-Heeled Jack. Some believe he was the result of an experiment gone wrong, perhaps an early attempt at creating a super soldier. Others speculated that he might be an alien visitor, his strange abilities the result of advanced extraterrestrial technology. There were also those that believed Spring-Heeled Jack was nothing more than a hoax, a tale concocted by the newspapers to sell more copies. After all, the 19th century was a time of great change and uncertainty, and people were eager for stories that would distract them from the harsh realities of life. Yet if he was merely a figment of the imagination, how could so many people from different walks of life and different parts of the city all report seeing the same terrifying figure? On the evening of the 28th of February, 1838, the streets of Limehouse bore witness to another eerie encounter with the figure now whispered about in hushed tones as Spring-Heeled Jack. Lucy Scales, an 18-year-old, and her sister were making their way home after a visit to their brother's residence. Their path took them through the dimly lit Green Dragon Alley, a place that would soon be etched in their memories forever. As the sisters navigated the alley, Lucy, walking ahead, noticed a figure standing in a recessed angle of the passage. Cloaked and seemingly waiting, the man held a lantern, its design eerily reminiscent of those used by the police. 
Before Lucy could react or even fully comprehend the situation, the figure took a menacing step forward and spewed a jet of blue flame directly into her face. The sudden and terrifying act rendered Lucy sightless and overwhelmed her senses. She collapsed to the ground, convulsing in violent fits. Her terrified screams echoed down the alley, reaching the ears of her brother, who rushed out to find his sister in such a distressed state. Lucy's sister, while trying to comfort and assist her, recounted the chilling details to their brother. She described the assailant as tall and thin, with an air of deceptive gentility about him. Notably, he did not utter a word during the entire ordeal, nor did he attempt to further harm the sisters. Instead, after his ghastly act, he retreated hastily, disappearing into the shadows from whence he came. Despite the immediate efforts of the police and the community, the mysterious figure who had terrorized Lucy Scales remained at large, his identity and motives shrouded in mystery. This incident, coming on the heels of other similar reports, only intensified the fear and intrigue surrounding the enigmatic Spring-Heeled Jack. As the 19th century progressed, the once frequent tales of Spring-Heeled Jack began to wane, but they never truly disappeared. Instead, they became sporadic bursts of terror that continued to haunt various parts of England. In the early 1870s, Peckham found itself in the grip of fear. The town was abuzz with reports of the Peckham Ghost, a figure eerily reminiscent of Jack. The news of the world was quick to connect the dots, suggesting that the ghost was none other than the infamous Leaper who had terrorized a previous generation. Soon after, in 1873, Sheffield was stirred by sightings of the Park Ghost. The descriptions matched Jack's, and locals were convinced that he had now chosen their town as his haunting ground. One of the most unsettling encounters occurred in August of 1877 at the Aldershot Garrison. A sentry, stationed for a quiet night, was startled by a figure advancing towards him. Before he could react, the figure, with Jack's signature audacity, slapped him repeatedly. Attempts to shoot the intruder proved futile, and he vanished with his characteristic bounding leaps. The incident was so alarming that there were even suggestions it might have been a prank by a fellow officer, though no evidence has surfaced to support this theory. In Lincoln, during the autumn of 1877, Jack was said to have donned a sheepskin, adding a bizarre twist to his legend. An attempt by locals to corner and capture him ended in frustration. Bullet seemed ineffective, and he used his unparalleled leaping abilities to evade the mob. By the late 19th century, Jack's appearances shifted to the Northwest. In 1888, he was reportedly seen atop St. Francis Xavier's church in Everton, Liverpool. This was not his last visit to the city, as another sighting was reported in 1904 in William Henry Street. Here, he was seen making his signature leaps across rooftops, as if playfully challenging onlookers below. While the frequency of Jack's appearances diminished towards the end of the 19th century, the terror he instilled remained consistent. Each sighting, though sporadic, rekindled the fear and intrigue surrounding this enigmatic figure. By the time of his last reported appearance in Liverpool in 1904, Spring-Heeled Jack had cemented his place as one of the most elusive and enduring legends in British folklore. Many skeptics believe that the tales surrounding Spring-Heeled Jack can be attributed to mass hysteria, a phenomenon where collective illusions of threat spread among a population. This perspective suggests that the stories of Jack are merely exaggerated versions of age-old boogeyman or devil tales, or perhaps even urban myths about a man claiming to be pursued by the devil. One theory posits that the legend might have been initiated by one or more individuals, with subsequent imitators taking up the mantle. A prevalent rumor from the 1840s identified the Marquess of Waterford, an Irish nobleman known for his erratic behavior, as a potential suspect. The Marquess, often in the news for his drunken antics and known to undertake any dare, was in London around the time of the initial sightings. Some believe he might have started the legend as a prank, only for it to be taken up by others. However, as time passed, the tales of Spring-Heeled Jack became more embellished, 
Stories of his fire-spitting abilities, unique features, and uncanny skill in evading capture fed the public's imagination. The lack of a verifiable aging process further fueled the legend, leading to an entire urban mythos surrounding the character. On the other end of the spectrum, some have delved into the more fantastical elements of the story, suggesting paranormal origins for Spring-Heeled Jack. Some theories propose that he might be an extraterrestrial, pointing to his non-human features and superhuman agility as evidence. Others believe he could be a demon, either summoned by occult practitioners or manifesting to sow chaos. Fortin authors have categorized Spring-Heeled Jack among phantom attackers, entities that appear human but display supernatural abilities and often targeting victims in secure locations. These attacks often include victims feeling paralyzed or under siege. While some of these incidents can be explained psychologically, others remain puzzling, especially when physical evidence is present but the attacker remains elusive. Interestingly, the legend of Spring-Heeled Jack is not unique to England. In Czechoslovakia during the years 1939 to 1945, tales emerged of Parak, the Spring Man of Prague. The stories surrounding Parak share striking similarities with those of Spring-Heeled Jack, from their supernatural leaping abilities to their elusive nature. Spring-Heeled Jack's influence on popular culture was profound. Penny Dreadfuls, cheap and sensational literature of the time often featured stories of Jack's escapades. His tale was adapted into plays, with actors donning the iconic white suit and helmet to reenact his terrifying encounters. In the 20th century, Jack's legend found its way into comic books, films, and television shows. He became a symbol of the unknown, a reminder that even in the heart of a modern city, there were still mysteries that defied explanation. In the end, the true nature of Spring-Heeled Jack may never be known. Was he a man, a monster, or something else entirely? We can only speculate. But one thing is certain, for a brief moment in time, he captured the imagination of an entire city, leaving behind a legacy of mystery and intrigue that continues to fascinate and bewilder to this day.